For this video, we're going to take a look at how you can solve a polynomial equation using the factoring process. Now, remember that the factoring process can be quite a lengthy process of, of theorems and rules that we use to really break this thing down. Let's look at the overall process on how we'll solve a polynomial equation. The very first thing that we'll end up doing is get zero on one side. The reason for doing this is then we can take our polynomial and break it down into all of its factors. And from each of the factors, we'll set them equal to zero. Now the factoring process is where we'll have to do lots of work. In that factoring process, the very first thing we'll do is just come up with a list of possible zeros. Then to make this list smaller, we'll end up using Descartes' rule of sign and the boundedness theorem uh, to hopefully knock off a few things that just aren't going to work. Throughout this process, we will use synthetic division to quickly test those possible zeros. If we ever break down our uh, polynomial small enough to where it's like an x squared, then we can finally use the quadratic formula or simple factoring to take care of the rest. So let's see what uh, example problem I've cooked up for this uh, so you can see all of these steps uh, in the process. I want to solve x to the fifth plus 34x squared minus 6x to the fourth plus 5x cubed is all equal to 84x minus 56. So this is a rather large uh, polynomial equation, but you'll see uh, through the factoring process we'll be able to figure out all of its solutions. So the very first step is let's get zero on one side, and we'll also make sure that our powers are in descending order. So we'll start off with x to the fifth, since that is our highest power, then I have minus 6x to the fourth, let's see, plus a 5x cubed, let's see, uh, plus 34x squared, it looks like my other two terms are on the other side of the equal sign. So let's get them on the same side, so minus 84x, minus 84x, and plus 56, plus 56. Now I'll move them to the other side. So minus 84x plus 56 is all equal to 0. Awesome. So I want to take this large polynomial now and find all of its zeros, and those zeros will be our solutions. Now, there's lots of things I could uh, start trying, but let's first develop a list of possible things that could work using our rational roots theorem. Remember to take the factors of your constant term on the end, and also take the factors of your leading term, in this case, 1. So factors of p. Well, there's lots of things that could go in there. Let's see, plus minus 1 plus minus 2, let's see, 3 does not go in there, plus minus 4, plus minus 7, plus minus 8, plus minus 14, plus minus 23, and plus minus 50, Six. So a lot of different things that are factors of p. Factors of q, oh, since it's just a 1, plus minus 1. So my possible rational zeros will be all of these over 1. Or, you know, essentially the, the same exact list that I have here for p. Right, now obviously looking at my polynomial, not all of these will work as solutions. Not all of them will be zeros. In fact, at most, this thing will have five real zeros. And let's see, I got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen things on my list. Yeah, lots of these things are going to work. So let's move into using Descartes' rule of sign to see if we can narrow this list just a little bit. According to Descartes' rule of sign, we have to count the sign changes to figure out how many possible zeros are positive or negative. So looking at our original, let's first count the sign changes. 
So it looks like we're going from positives to negatives. So there's one sign change. Negative to positive, there's two sign changes. Positive to negative, three sign changes. And it looks like negative to positive, four sign changes. So I know that the number of, of possible positive zeros could be four or less than that by an even number. So four, two, or zero. Could be four of them, two of them, or zero. All right, now for the second part of this, you want to imagine putting in a negative x and also counting the sign changes to figure out the negative zeros. So let's first write this with a negative x in all of the spots, and then we'll simplify it. Negative x to the fourth plus 5, negative x cubed plus 34, negative x squared minus 84, negative x plus 56. All right, simplifying this, uh, a negative x to the fifth would be a negative x to the fifth, so that negative sign can come out since I have an odd power. Uh, negative x to an even power would wipe out that sign. So negative six x to the fourth, so this negative sign is just the one that came from here. Uh, negative x to the third, so a negative sign comes out. Negative five x cubed, Let's see, this is an x squared, so plus 34 x squared. Negative times a negative is a positive, 84 x. And let's see, just a 56 on the end. All right, so now let's count these sign changes. So negative, 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 Ooh, looks like we're flipping to positive. Positive, positive, positive. All right. So possible negative zeros could be only one of them, or possibly none whatsoever. OK. So if I come across at least one negative zero, then I don't need to check for any more. If I come across four positive zeros, then I don't need to check for any more of those. All right, so now I need to go through and actually just start testing out many of these zeros to see which ones will work, which ones will not work. Let's use our synthetic division uh, to start testing these out one by one. Now in that synthetic division process, we'll also use the boundedness theorem to see if we can make our list a little bit smaller. So let's see, I always like to start off with these smaller zeros because uh, they're really easy to test out, uh, to see if they work. So let's try a 1 into our polynomial. And we have a fairly large one. 1x to the 5th minus 6x to the 4th, 5x cubed, 34x squared minus 84x plus 56. All right. So we bring the first number down. We multiply. Add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and multiply, add. All right, so we're looking at this last term to see if it uh, becomes a zero. And unfortunately, it looks like it does not, so I know that one doesn't work. All right. So now I can go on to test something else. Let's try a negative one. Not too bad. So we'll bring down the first guy, multiply, add, multiply, add, Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, 
and add. All right. So I can tell this one definitely doesn't work. The remainder is not zero. So one is off my list, both the positive and the negative. Cool. All right, let's keep going. Maybe negative two works. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and see, add, multiply, and add. All right, looks like this one is definitely no good. Last one is not a remainder. So now we'll try positive two, see if we have any better luck with that one. All right, so we have two going into our polynomial. One, negative six, five, three, four, eight, 84, 56. All right, so we'll bring down the one, multiply, add. Alright, looks like we actually found one that works. Two is definitely one of our zeros. I know that one didn't work. Negative two didn't work either, but two looks like it's good. So I've reduced my polynomial and made it a little bit smaller. Now remember, you can keep checking two into the reduced polynomial until it eventually doesn't work. Let's try it again. So one, two, negative two, four, negative seven, negative fourteen, fourteen, eight. Hey, what do you know? Looks like it worked out twice. Awesome. All right, well, why not try it one more time? One, multiply, zero, uh, zero, negative seven, negative fourteen, zero. All right. So it looks like uh, two is definitely one of my solutions, uh, and my polynomial is getting rather small right now. In fact, if you're keeping track of it, we started with x to the fifth. And after the first iteration where we actually found one of these zeros, we reduced it to x to the fourth. Then we found something else in there, which reduced it to x cubed. And at this point, we're all the way down to x squared. So it shows us that uh, definitely 2 is a factor. So x minus 2, we found it three times. And that I'm only left with an x squared minus a 7 left. So my polynomial is much, much smaller at this point. Now that we've factored our polynomial, we can take each of the factors and set them equal to zero. So I know that x minus 2 is either equal to zero, or x squared minus 7 is equal to zero. So in solving this one, x equals 2 is one of my solutions. This one, let's move the 7 to the other side, then take the square root. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Alright, so it looks like we have three different solutions. Two, positive of the square root of 7, and negative square root of 7. Now you might be wondering, wait, 
does Descartes' rule of sign really fit in with what we just found? And the answer is yes. Let's go ahead and list out all of the zeros that we found. So of course, 2 was a 0, and it was of multiplicity 3. That means we found it 3 different times. So just for fun, I'm going to list it out 3 times. And we also have a square root of 7, that's positive. And we have a square root of 7, that's negative. And if you remember, Descartes' rule of sign said we'd have, at most, 4 positive. And at most, 1 negative. Alright, but that's just a side note. Uh, the real thing to, to keep in mind at this point is that we found our solutions to our equation. x equals 2, and x equals the positive and negative square root of 7.